Hey everybody, welcome to Adobe Live Day 2 with my new friend Anderson Blue. What's up, Anderson? Hey, what's going on? How's everybody doing? Yeah, chat, let us know how you're doing today. If you were here yesterday with myself and Anderson, uh, we're going to be working on some more character design today. Yesterday, Anderson was working on some pretty sweet um, sneakerhead art. And we'll jump into that very soon. Uh, but before we do that, just want to let you guys know that we have a full day of live streaming ahead of us. So you can actually scroll beneath the video and check out the schedule for the rest of the day. But um, I'm going to kick it over to Anderson to introduce himself in case you didn't meet him yesterday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What's going on, everybody? Anderson Blue, illustrator, graphic design, and also sneaker designer. Um, I guess what people know me for is my pop art sneaker designs. Pretty much I merge the worlds of pop culture, sneakers, and basketball, and create artwork. That's a little bit about what I do. Um, right in front of you, what you guys are seeing is some of my artwork, um, some of the artwork that I'm known for, as you can see on my website. But some of the other projects I am known for are my sneaker designs right in front of you, which you see right here, is it is, is a collaboration I did with Foot Locker and G.I. Joe. Shout out to any of my G.I. Joe fans out there. Um, I did two different sneakers, one white, one black, based after the two ninjas, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes. And then I had my most recent collaboration that I did with Foot Locker with Converse, pretty much giving back. Um, this was for charity. All the proceeds went to charity for people affected for COVID-19. So we're trying to give money back to the families that were hit the hardest and uh, very, very happy to be a part of it. And shout out to Foot Locker for making that happen. Awesome. I love those lemonade sneaks. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Converse myself. It's kind of my daily driver. Absolutely. Nice. So let's chat about what you worked on yesterday and then yeah, we can go into what we're going to be doing today. So yesterday, I was working on this design you see here. This is where we left off, but I'll show you where I started. Uh, let's get rid of all of these. So yesterday, I pretty much started with this design that I did. Everything you see here was hand drawn. Um, what I did was I took one of the new sneakers that's coming out by Michael Jordan, and I merged it with the theme of the sneaker called the Raging Bull. This is the sneaker right here, an all red silhouette. Um, with a little bit of black hits every, every now and then here and there on the bottom sole. So this is the design that I put together that I'm calling the Raging Bull. But if you guys have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. It's not concrete. And uh, I'm going to continue bringing this bad boy to life. Awesome. And you got pretty far yesterday. We jumped into some color and we finally got to see all those shapes come together that you worked so hard on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that being said, I guess I'm jump right into it. Yeah, and just as a reminder for everyone, I think the final kind of goal for this was to be a sticker, but it could yes. be other things as well since it's an illustrator. Yeah, absolutely. I'm thinking maybe a print, stickers, you know, but definitely by the time I'm done, we'll see, uh, see where it takes me. Yeah, and chat, if you have any other ideas for like what kind of merch, what kind of swag this could go on, let us know. I definitely love an enamel pin, a vinyl mm -hmm. sticker, all right, where do I want to start? You know what? Let's start with the horns. Cool. And Anthony Jackson's already coming in hot with a question. Uh, did Love you it. ever do a collaboration with a place called Shoe Palace? I have not. I've actually, uh, I know of the store. I know of the brand, but I have not done anything with them. That'd be dope, though. My goal is to try to work with as many brands as possible, so that would definitely be really dope. Seems like you have a good head start already with all of your uh, Foot Locker collabs. <laughs> yes, Foot Locker has been very kind to me, so shout out to them. Cool, and we're jumping back in with the pencil tool. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Steve has an idea that you could turn your designs into a coloring book. You know what? That is a really, really good idea. Something I never thought about. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of perfect. You have these great graphic shapes. Mm -hmm. Your designs are friendly looking. They're, that is true. Yeah, could work well. Get kids into sneakers early. <laughs> Believe it or not, um, I was actually telling my fiance this, but the age of people that are into sneakers are really, really young. I've seen kids as young as 11 with like 30 pairs of sneakers in their home. God bless the parents. Right. <laughs> so, so a coloring book might work out. Yeah, they've gotta be mowing a lot of lawns to be paying for all of those sneakers as I, an 11 year old. I, I hope so, I hope so. And Christine says that she could see that this design might be stitched into a cap. That'd be cool. Yeah, definitely a dad hat or a snapback. <laughs> that would be yeah. cool. And while you're working on adding this shadowing and highlights chat, let us know where you're watching from. And if you were here yesterday, let us know if this is your first day. We'd love to hear that as well. Like I mentioned, we have a full day of Adobe Live coming at you after this. We started with uh, a daily creative challenge with Val. I think even Kyle Webster was on earlier today working with brushes, so that's awesome. We've got XD daily creative challenge, Illustrator daily creative challenge. So if you've ever wanted to learn Photoshop, Illustrator, or XD, those are a great way to start Start. It's free, it's beginner friendly, and I highly recommend it. For free, it's for me. That's what I always say. I like that. <laughs> All right, so let's start adding some highlights to the top of the horn. There you go. Oh, nice. Look at that curve. <laughs> Oh yeah, good point, Cody. So later we're gonna be doing an artist spotlight, probably in about like an hour and a half, uh, right before the end of the stream. So we already have the artist chosen for this spotlight today. But if you want to nominate yourself or a friend for a future spotlight, you can do that. Uh, there's a little artist spotlight tab. I think it's over there. Maybe I'm pointing the wrong way. Um, above the chat, you'll see artist spotlight and all of the information about that. And it's it's not even really a portfolio review. It's more of like a, we're showing off your art and we're getting hyped about it with you. Yeah, I'm excited to see the artwork. Mm -hmm. I took a little peek at it. It's very cool. Very okay. my style. Right, so get some little brush action going on here. So, so sometimes if I want to like, I guess, cheat the system, what I'll do is I could always click on a brush I've used before. It'll automatically default to that and I could just jump right back into it. So it makes it a little faster. Awesome. Yeah, you did a lot of brush customization yesterday. That was really cool to see. Thank you. Let's see if this, all right, right off the bat. Good start, guys, good start. I like that you're building these shadows out to not be super dark. You're kind of leaving that darkest dark for the outline and like the mm -hmm. very shadowy parts. Mm -hmm. And then anytime I'm doing this kind of stuff, I like to, you know, play around and see what works the best. Um, I just try to be open-minded because you never know because I have happy accidents all the time. Yeah, and you mentioned yesterday, like the worst that can happen is you control or command Z and undo it. Absolutely. I feel like I got that from, from Bob Ross, happy accidents. Yes, happy little trees. Exactly. <laughs> We've got Rob Zilla in the chat. What's up, Rob? Good to see you. Hey, what's going on, Rob? Somebody was recommending that you guys collab together, do some sweet NBA work. Hey, I'm always down for some MBA. <laughs> right. That's a lot better. There we go. So it's funny, by doing these strokes, I didn't realize it, but um, this is what kind of helped to define my own style, just kind of creating my own way of creating shadows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty much what I'm saying is experiment, 
experimenting is always a good thing. You never know where, where you'll land. Yeah, and we talked a little yesterday about how you've had people tell you that they can recognize your artwork across the room. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that experimentation is such a great way to build your style without like having to try so hard to have a style. Just yeah. try different things and whatever feels good, that's great. And I personally feel like if, um, when you design, if you're not doing it on the computer, it's a little easier to experiment and try new things out. Mm -hmm. I don't know about everybody else, but anytime I'm doing it on a computer, it feels so definite. And sometimes like it just takes a little longer to move things around. So doing it by hand kind of gives you that flexibility. Right. Like when you're doing it by hand, you could literally crumple up your paper and just like yeah. throw it away from you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't know if I've ever like just crumpled up what I was working on and thrown it away. I feel like I see people in movies all the time. They're like angrily crumpling things up, but I usually just like put it next to me in a pile and don't look I, at it anymore. <laughs> I do the same thing. Yeah. It, gives, it gives me hope. So I was like, maybe, maybe I get something out of this. Yeah, maybe. I like that. Uh, chat, if you are also a digital and traditional creator, let us know. Do you like to start on paper, go into digital? Are you digital 100%? How do you feel? Yeah, I wonder if anybody does everything on their iPad. I feel like I've seen a lot more of that oh, yeah. in the last few years. Yeah, I feel like it's doing 100% iPad or at least starting on the iPad feels a little easier to me because it feels like I'm mm. holding a sketchbook. It's just like mm -hmm. a digital one. Um, and then taking it into Photoshop and finishing things off if you need to. <laughs> Cody says, I'm not a crumpler. If anything, I fold it. She's there a folder. Go. I like that. Cool, so you're adding kind of these sub shadows beneath mm -hmm. the shadows. Yeah, I thought I would try something, try something different. I mentioned this yesterday when you were working on the laces, but adding mm -hmm. those kind of pointy, almost triangular mm -hmm. shapes really helps get that texture of the item across while keeping that nice kind of shiny pop style that you have. It's cool. Thank you. I feel like being from Long Island, I don't skate, but a whole lot of my friends do or did. Mm -hmm. And I feel like watching those graphics have definitely played into what I do. Ah, yeah. That's Santa Cruz. Definitely. Uh -huh. uh, Anthony, Anthony says that he starts with sketching everything out in the sketchbook and then finishing on the iPad. Um, Clever says, I cannot easily crumple my iPad, but I toss paper balls for the cat. <laughs> So funny, I, I feel like before I got the Cintiq was right before um, Adobe started to have all the programs accessible. Uh. So I made the commitment like, you know what? I'm definitely gonna get it. And now everything's on the iPad. So who knows, maybe one day I might go back and uh, loop back around and get the iPad. Cause I was here, it's good for traveling. Oh which, yeah. Which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry about that timing. That's a bummer. Hey, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, going from the mouse to anything's better than the mouse. So. Yeah, it's a good way to get carpal tunnel. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to do this. Ooh, okay, darkening things up. Always trying to play around to get the right highlights. And uh, speaking of carpal tunnel and using a mouse, I think it was Cody yesterday that was reminding us in the chat that we need to take breaks, drink water, do stretches. Absolutely. Very important. So I was wondering, Anderson, do you do anything specific to kind of keep your body right while you're making digital artwork? Or is that something you're still trying to figure out? Oh, I do. Um, as much as uh, I hung up my basketball jersey, I still work out. Um, when uh, I was able to go to the gym, 
Um, I did a lot of CrossFit. That's like my new passion thing I really enjoy doing. It's where I could be competitive and nobody touches me so I don't get hurt. That's great. Like that. Um, and uh, in the past, I used to run track. So whenever I have a chance, it's not freezing in New York. I do a little bit of running. So any kind of exercising, I'm always down to try just to try to stay healthy. Because just like you said, sitting in a chair for a really long time is never really, really good. Um, and also another thing I'm actually starting to enjoy is yoga. Ah. So I get the kick out of, because people don't know this, I'm six foot three. So like I walk into yoga st the <laughs> into the <laughs> studio and they look at me like, hey, are you here to the basketball gym's over there? I'm like, no, nah, I'm here to do yoga. So <laughs> I love that. Is that and more this, of a recent thing or? Uh, yes, yeah, definitely recent. Yeah. So my um, CrossFit studio started doing yoga and then I kind of found a place by me, started doing it. That's awesome. I'm all about trying new things, all about it. Yeah, I can see that from your artwork too. Experimenting, <laughs> trying new things. Yeah. Yeah, Cody says, stretch your wrists, drink water and save your work. Those are the three golden rules. Absolutely. Definitely save your work. Yes. Yeah, I think we got to almost the end of the stream yesterday and you're like, oh yeah, I gotta save. Yeah, I am the worst with that. I have to like tie a string around my finger so I remember to save. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point from Christine that taking a break away from your desk, doing some uh, exercise is also a good way to rest your eyes from staring at that screen all day. Yes especially in this last year because it's so easy i don't know about you but i feel like i'm always working like even when i don't have to somehow i'm just you know in front of my computer longer than i need to be just because you know i'm always home yeah i'm definitely feeling that especially in the winter i'm like what else am i supposed to do right exactly <laughs> i'm in the same boat when it's it cold really in new stinks. york it's cold mm -hmm. so you're in new york now but you're from long island yeah, so um, I work, I have an office in Brooklyn, and then where I live is like 30, 40 minutes away. Gotcha. So yeah. So not too far from the city. Everybody just got a visual of me burning my entire mouth on my tea. You're welcome, everyone. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Oh, that'll wake you up. <laughs> making my cheeks red <laughs> uh, such is life so so yeah so right now i'm just going over everything just adding the highlights and um you know the shadowing and everything like that i always i think that it helps to have my artwork pop off especially if it's an art print uh, I was saying this yesterday, but my goal is to have something that if it's hung up in a um, sneaker gallery or a sneaker store, somebody's room, um, you know, pops right off the wall. So that's why I like to use these bold colors. Yeah, I got a little sneak peek of your choices for background color, and I think that's even going to help it pop all the better. Thank you. So you said that your office is in Brooklyn. Is that where mm -hmm. you would want to have your art show in the Brooklyn area? Um, I was anywhere in the city, preferably Manhattan. Oh. I always envisioned like, you know, doing an art show in Manhattan. I feel like any artist from New York, that's kind of, I would say that's a goal. Mm -hmm. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I think you can make it happen. Yeah, I think so too. We'll see. We'll see what the universe does for me. Using that good old Pathfinder, making those shapes. Yep. Ooh, I love that little cutout you have at the edge of his cheek. That's awesome. Thank you. In fact, I'm happy you said that because I'm going to throw a highlight right over there. In fact, I'll use a brush. Oh, okay. So Joseph in the chat is uh, saying that he bought the Creative Cloud, so all of the creative apps for his 12-year-old daughter, um, and is wondering about some guidance. 
So helping to direct her, but not getting her burnt out. Where would you recommend a young artist starts? What do you think that they should make? Man, um, honestly, anything that they enjoy. Um, so like, I'll tell you a quick story. When I was in art school, which was a long time ago, or when I was in high school, um, I was always drawing comics. And then when I used to show my art teacher, she didn't take it serious because she was the individual that thought if you did art, it has to be like fine art. So you have to do like the really intense shading, the realism stuff. And I'm a strong believer in it could be anything as long as there's people that's into it. So whatever she's, she's into, it could be cartoons, it could be realism, it could be anything like that. But whatever her interest is, that's where I would point her into and just trying to figure out how she can do that, get comfortable in doing that. Um, I just believe that once you're on the foundation and how to do these things, you could be able to branch off. Um, I feel like I got better, especially at cartoons when I took a step back and I learned the foundations of how to actually draw people, mm -hmm. really learn color and really how to, you know, how the masters did these things. So when I went back, I could actually take those same fundamentals and add it into my own drawing. So that's how I would approach it. Yeah, I think that's really great. Having that balance of learning the, the fundamental skills, they might be a little more boring, but it's gonna make your <laughs> artwork, even as a 12 year old, so much stronger. And I'll yeah. also say, I remember being 12 mm -hmm. and just filling up sketchbooks. Like, I don't think I, I've ever made art more than I did when I was like 10, 11, 12 years old. Really? Yeah. And I look back on that time and I'm like, where was that energy? How do I get it back? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, don't worry too much about her getting burnt out because if she's passionate about it at such a young age, she should just totally bloom into it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. me speaking personally, as a kid, I had so much free time. You know, I was doing anything to keep myself busy. Right. Yeah, it's like the time that you can spend your first thousand hours getting better at mm -hmm. art. That's like when you would want to do it. Absolutely. Not to say that it's ever too late, though. It's no, not. no, no, no. I didn't take art seriously until college. I was always just messing around with it. And it was a entrepreneur class that I took that um, I put like a creative spin on it. And um, that's what I was like, you know what? Might as well give this a shot. And look at you now. Yeah. <laughs> drawing sneakers <laughs> that's the dream and uh people in chat are saying that it would be nice to have a live stream that's more angled towards teens or kids and cody brought up a great point uh kyle webster's draw along streams are perfect for people of all ages we have tons of kids who watch with their parents and it really is a draw along almost like bob ross but like that's pretty draw awesome yeah, drawing cartoon characters instead of landscapes. So if you ever see that on the schedule, I highly recommend any of Kyle's streams, actually. He's great. That's awesome. I always said to myself, who's going to be the next Bob Ross for, you know, our generation? I bet they exist somewhere on YouTube. Right, that is true. YouTube <laughs> would be the perfect place for that. There used to be some people who streamed on Twitch that would like put on the big wig and do the the easel and the quiet <laughs> talking. That's amazing. Yeah, they're trying their best. But just talking about college, I can actually uh, tell you how I took the plunge into doing graphic design. Please. Um, so it was my senior year and I was running track and um, I took an entrepreneur class and I guess it gave me a whole bunch of ideas and energy. And I was drawing class to pass the time because unfortunately I never paid attention, but that's another story. So I drew a really cool design that's like I heart college, right? So I removed the two L's and I put two solar, <laughs> two solo cups because of beer pong or whatever. And uh, I showed my friend and my friend was just like, yo, I'm a graphic designer, I can make this. And then like, I got so inspired that like I bought a heating press, um, had it shipped to my school. And for some reason, nobody questioned it. I put the heating press in my dorm room. Um, oh my my friend made, yes, my friend made the graphic. Uh, I wore it to school the next day. People asked about it. I said, come to my room, I'll make you one for like 10 bucks. Gave it to a few more of my friends that played sports. They wore it. 
And then next thing you know, I had like a soul train line in my room of people buying shirts. And then one night I decided to go around campus and just ask people if they wanted shirts or anything like that on a random Friday night. And I think I made like 50 shirts um, after walking around, knocking on doors and just asking people to see if they wanted a shirt. I pretty much sold out of every shirt in like an hour. And that's when I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna try this graphic design thing out. That's amazing. And I think I read that on your website. There might've been some jello shots involved as well yes. on that Friday night. <laughs> Wasn't sure the audience. I was trying to keep the alcohol limited, but yes, <laughs> definitely uh, went around and gave jello shots for every person that bought a t-shirt. So, there you go. Uh, so yeah, definitely made it work. That's marketing 101. Yes. <laughs> Um, somebody, oh, I think it's the same person who was asking about their daughter, Joseph, was saying, I'm trying to get her to learn Illustrator because she always complains that her drawings are pixelated and she needs to learn vectorization. Mm. Um, and I think that's one idea, but we can also increase the pixel amount on um, those digital drawings so that they, mm -hmm. that they don't look pixelated when they're zoomed in. Uh, that's called the PPI or pixels per inch. So you can always go in and change that. Joseph, if you're using Adobe Fresco, you can change that when you're making the new file. That might be worth worth a shot. So what I didn't know a lot of people do, um, and I think uh, this will help Joseph, is that a lot of artists, what they'll do is they'll double the size of their artwork for whatever they're trying to do it for. So if they're trying to do it for like an eight by 11, they'll do it double the size. So if they shrink it down, they won't lose any pixels. So I thought that was really cool. I hear a lot of artists do that for um, Photoshop. Yeah, that's a great, great point. I remember in our school, it was like you, one of the requirements was it had to be 300 PPI, no matter what yes. it was being made for, because that's yes. going to print beautifully pretty much no matter what. Mm -hmm. So I learned that the hard way because I sent it, <laughs> just like Joseph's daughter, I sent to a screen printer. He's just like, this is not going to work. You need to <laughs> go back, redo it. It has to be 300 DPI. Mm -hmm. Man, and that's a whole other thing, getting files ready for production, specifically for t-shirts or sending it to a manufacturer. Absolutely. <sighs> but we have Google and YouTube and we have Adobe different videos to teach you how to do these things. Because when I first did it, there was no, you know, just the screen printers told you. Right. So now you have so many resources to kind of, to figure out what's the best way to do these things. That's that entrepreneurial spirit that you have. Yeah, I would say so. But I'm a strong believer anybody could do it. Just gotta get started. Mm -hmm. That first step is important. Oops, I'm going to. Nice, Joseph's asking a lot of really good questions in chat. Um, for commercial use, wouldn't it be better to take your freehand drawings and then polish it in Illustrator? Kind of, I guess, how you're doing it right now. Um, what do you mean by commercial use? Oh, we he means by commercial use, I should say. <laughs> I'm guessing just selling it in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Stickers or t-shirt. And I would say there are things that you can do in Photoshop that you can't do in Illustrator, like visually, mm -hmm. like more, more textural and more painterly stuff. So if that's mm -hmm. what your daughter wants to do, Joseph, then Photoshop might be the best place. But if she likes this more vectory kind of sharp uh, graphic, then Illustrator by all means. Yeah, just like what you said, I think it depends on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a way to do anything. So yeah, <laughs> that's the beautiful thing about these products. There's a million mm -hmm. different ways to do it and you can pretty much do anything. And also just to continue what you were saying, it also depends on the business you're working with because um, certain businesses, like I know when I work with uh, Foot Locker or um, any other sneaker brands or Converse, a lot of stuff I have to send to them has to be vector. So they're able to get it printed on um, different materials and stuff like that. 
Mm -hmm. So I, I think it, it also does depend on like who you're working with and what they need it for. Definitely. Which makes it really important to know multiple applications or at least know someone who can help you or search mm -hmm. the internet for some tutorials like you mentioned earlier. Let me go back and correct this action. Ooh, okay. Let's see it. Let's see some undoing in action. Just had an idea. <laughs> But one thing that I'm happy with that printers have gotten so good that if you do send them a, a pixelated file or as long as it's higher resolution, they'll be able to just do the work for you and do the separations and stuff like that. They've mm -hmm. gotten really, really good. Nice, look at that sharp highlight. Just gonna make sure you have your solid highlights. That's what I always say. We've got some pro tips in the chat about Bob Ross. Apparently you can watch all of his episodes on Netflix. And then he also streams on the weekends on Twitch. Which is awesome. I did not know that. And by he streams on Twitch, I mean they play his replays on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Bob Ross has a Twitch channel. Imagine. <laughs> I was described, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Me too. Earlier in the chat, people were talking about what kind of work they made as uh, when they were younger, like when they were a kid, if they made artwork. So chat, mm -hmm. if you didn't chime in earlier, let us know what kind of things you like to draw when you first started drawing. Um, Anderson said that he liked to do a lot of comics. It's mm -hmm. cool. I was definitely copying images out of my manga graphic novels. <laughs> That's the best way to start. Hmm. I know exactly what's happening. I'm trying to fix it. Some pesky extra points. Yeah, so the shape isn't fully closed. So if I try to divide it, it's doing like this funky, um, divide thing so i just gotta figure out how to close the shape and i should be good cool in fact i'm gonna go in and because the compound shape let's see if i can release that um there you go nice in fact i can actually just show you guys what's happening so out if you ever see this happen, and I'll try to do a quick example. So let's say you try and divide two things and you get, oh, never mind, it's working now. See? <laughs> never mind, forget it. <laughs> Moving on. I know, right? <laughs> We've got a lot of people talking about what they were drawing as a child. Uh, Andrea did Ren and Stimpy as a kid. Wow, that is some adult work to be doing as a child, Andrea. Uh, Cody did Pokemon, Neopets, anime characters. Oh my gosh, Cody, we, we're the same child, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Golden says, when I first started, I was doing landscapes and random things I liked the shape of. Nice. Jason is wondering, Anderson, what type mm -hmm. of research do you do before diving into your sketch? That's a really good question. Um, hmm. Pretty much, depending on what the topic is, like for this, I'll probably just look like at different bull logos or, you know, um, different bull designs or just looking up what bulls look like, you know, just get myself familiarized and just trying to figure out like what I want to go with. And then just trying to figure out, like for me, the hardest thing is trying to merge the world of sneakers and the object or thing I'm trying to draw. So, but as you, you know, jump on Pinterest and spend like 
a day just kind of just looking around, just trying to figure out how I want to, you know, how I want to do things. Nice. I always find that it's hard to take the step from looking at inspiration, like on Pinterest to actually mm -hmm. start sketching. That's like a wide gap for me. I need to figure out how to get into sketching a little bit sooner and look at I, a little less inspiration. I get that. It's so easy to get lost in doing that stuff. Right. And I feel like it also, it affects my final product because it makes, mm -hmm. it almost fills my head with how something should already look and it keeps me from making something new. I get that. But, um, but yeah, that's what I do. I know everybody has different ways how they do things, but that's how I approach it. I just, um, just make a board, put down just pretty much put all my ideas on the screen and try to figure out like, all right, how do I want to approach this? Nice. And that's where some multiple sketches come in handy and mm -hmm. just trying to figure out where you want to go. Um, I think it's Sydney is wondering, does Adobe offer any live streams in Spanish? That's a great question, Sydney. So we have some European and uh, specifically German streams. But the really cool thing that happened at Max this year is that we announced that we are going to allow user live streaming. So anybody across the world could live stream straight to their Behance port, uh, profiles. So I know that there are people who stream in multiple languages. Uh, you might be able to find a really cool Spanish speaking stream that way. So if you scroll beneath us, if you're watching us on Behance.net slash live, you'll be able to see different live streams happening. But don't don't go yet. Keep watching. <laughs> but it's great for when Adobe Live is off air uh, later in the evenings. That's pretty cool. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could totally start streaming from your own profile if you want cool. to. Especially the way everything is going, it's a good skill to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people in the chat, I'm curious if you would ever be interested in live streaming yourself or if you're more of just a watcher, if you wouldn't want to be on camera or showing off your skills. I know we already have some streamers in the chat. Cody is an awesome live streamer. You've probably seen her uh, hosting Adobe Live or streaming herself. Rob's awesome. Some highlights. More highlights over here. It's really cool to see how you go between using the pencil tool to like draw the actual outline of the highlight and then just using the brush to, to stroke it. It's awesome. Thank you. Jason says that he loves your work and that you have mad skills. Ah. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. <laughs> so, all right. So I think you guys can see my mouse. So see this little thing right here on the side, the sneaker. So I'm going to try to create a pattern that would look similar to that. I think I'm going to keep it red, though. I don't think it's going to make sense if I keep it white. So maybe I'll do almost like a black pattern. All right. Cool. Let's see how you tackle this. I'm really curious. So I'm just going to start with one little square rectangle, I guess I should say. Let's go with black. All right. That looks good. Then I'm just going to round it off a little bit. Cool. And I always like to just make a copy and just try to match it up. Like that's going to be way too big. It's a little bit too rounded. Oh. Perfect. Now hopefully that should fit. Yeah, I think I'll do.
Right, let's go ahead and grab this. Oh. Mm. Let's see if we could change to a pad and brush. Yep. So what's cool about pad and brushes is anytime I use a brush, it'll constantly use that same object that I just drew. It's super close, so let's um, give it some space. Yeah, 100 looks good. Um, it's definitely going to be black, so I could just leave it under none, stretch to fit. And because it's black, it might be able to blend in. So what's cool about this, so like even if I do like a wave pattern, it should follow. Wow, and it even gets a little bit curvy if it's on the yeah. top of the... That's great. Which is nice. So it doesn't look too uniform and then it doesn't look, it starts to look odd. So then I'm just gonna. Now what I wonder is if I lower the, yep. So if I lower the stroke, I'll be able to fit more of these in there. That is so cool. So you made a shape, you dragged the shape onto the brushes panel and mm -hmm. voila, pattern brush. And then as long as, you know, wherever you move the lines, it's going to follow. So, and I could always go back and edit it. So let's say, huh, I want to see if this is going to make it, make the stroke a little thicker when I do it, apply the stroke. Okay. So, what I'll do is I'll just add another one. I'll just up the stroke a little bit. I'll just make it a little smaller if that was the issue. And like everything, you kind of just have to mess around with a little bit just to get it the right way. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I'm gonna take this. Do the same thing. You know what? Nice, good old 75. Mm. Cool. So I think that matches pretty well. Then I could do a few things I could just I can redraw it. I can add the fact I'm going to redraw it because I'm not going to mess around with these. Cool. I could just, you could do a few things. You can copy and paste it. You could just eyeball it, hand draw it for yourself. That's awesome. I like this kind of, it feels like it was done with a machine, but it has a little bit of a hand drawn kind of hand placed mm -hmm. feel to it. And there you go. Easy peasy. And to me, I think that's the fastest way to do it. Because if you do a pattern, you run into it being too uniform and it won't it won't match the shape that you're going in. So yeah, if you turn no into a brush, exactly, you can see how it just goes with uh, you know the shape. Yeah. That's cool. sweet. So I'm gonna just do a little bit more shadowing on the teeth, and I think I'm about done. Jump and add it. the background, of course. Of course. Yes, yes, yes. Got to make it pop right at the very end. Absolutely. I'm curious if you've ever used the app uh, Adobe Capture before. Um, I have not. What does it do? It's pretty cool. It's like uh, basically you could make a pattern brush for Illustrator out of anything in the world, like a picture that you take or a drawing that you make. Really? Um, yeah, basically we'll vectorize whatever you take a picture of and then you mm. can make a brush, you can make a pattern, you can make um, even a 3D material from it. It's pretty cool. So is this like on the phone? Yep, you could do it on phone or even um, on your iPad. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, you just sold me, so. <laughs> it's I'm free having... too, so no selling required. There you go, like I said before, if it's, if it's for free, it's for me. <laughs> Nice. I like those shadows. Beatrix is wondering what size of Cintiq do you use and is it a pro or a regular one? So I have a pro and it's the, I think it's a 20 inch one. 
Yeah, but that's the one that I have, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But I enjoy it. I like it. Um, I'm a bigger guy, so I need as much space as possible. Nice. I've used the like 30 inch or it's like 32 or something like that. And it's just, mm -hmm. I feel like it'd be too big even for you. Really? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's like your entire table. Yes. Literally. It's like a yard of screen. <laughs> And I should want to try something. I think it'll add towards the detail. Oop. Anthony says that this looks so cool, and I agree. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you had those kind of crazy, angry veins in the eyes in the sketch. Yeah, so nice. I've never seen a happy bull, but I've always seen an angry, crazy one. So <laughs> why not go with that? Yeah, although maybe that's an interesting direction to explore. The super happy, like Ferdinand the Bull. <laughs> Let's back up, take a look to see what we have. Now, I would say it looks like a raging bull to me. Yeah, that like adds an extra level of crazy to that bull. So, let's see if we can get a... Little background for this. Yes. Um, I'm gonna go with the lace color. Keep it pretty simple because I want to keep the attention on the bull. Don't want anything to distract. And the good news is if I want to make this a sticker, all I have to do is just send it to any sticker company and they'll be able to do it just the way that it is. That is sweet. I love that little pop of yellow because the only other yellow in the design is a uh, that little highlight, but maybe mm -hmm. it's too bright. Who knows? You know what? I'm trying to find the right... There you go. Nice middle ground. Then... It looks like it's hovering. And then boom, you have a sneaker art. A sneaker sticker, sneaker art print. That easy. I mean, it wasn't easy, but boom, there it is. <laughs> but yeah, so this is pretty much, you know, the start to finish. Um, I guess I'll, for the people that are still here, I'll just run you through where it started and how it finished. Yeah, let's see that. But uh, let's see here. So like I said before, start off with this. Um, just the bull by itself as the sneaker. Like I said, this is my reference for the sneaker right here. Um, pretty much tried to stay as close to sneaker as possible, but changed things around. So I felt, uh, just because I thought it would look better um, as a graphic, um, didn't want too much red. So I decided to swap out the red laces uh, with some orange laces. And then I went and I built out my shapes, then added the stroke to the end. Um, like I said, I just have a lot of flexibility as far as the stroke because you make the entire shape, um, everything looks uniform because I have the stroke in the background, as you can see, you know, it kind of gives it a different, um, you know, some character, control Z for that. And then after that, I went and added the background. So it looks like, you know, a solid, a solid print, something that, uh, I might use for the future. So. That's awesome. I saw someone on your Instagram posted on your sketch being like when are you gonna drop the finished thing and i'm like now we can 
Exactly, exactly. So yeah, very happy how this came out. So cool. Thanks for showing us your entire process. I know a lot of artists maybe want to keep their trade secret secret, but I really appreciate you having this educational mindset. Not a problem. So it's funny, yesterday somebody asked me about MF Doom because I had a uh, MF Doom drawing. So I thought if I finish this in time, I'll jump in and actually work on it live. Live. This actually be a print I'll be releasing really, really soon. So thought why not just do it here? Awesome. We've got about 40 minutes until we're going to do the artist spotlight. So let's jump into MF Doom and see what kind of damage you can do. Awesome. And this so is a, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You can jump. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is a good segue because someone was wondering how you think of your concepts. So mm -hmm. this is kind of cool. We're starting with a new concept. How did this one come about? Absolutely. I'll take you guys to the very beginning. Yes. So um, one of my favorite sneakers is Nike SBs. This is one of the sneakers right here. SB stands for skateboarding. Um, so back in, I don't even know, 2016, um, in fact, I'm lying to you, I think 2009, but that doesn't matter. Uh, Nike put out a sneaker with this rapper right here called MF Doom. Um, he's pretty much an underground artist. He's <laughs> rapper's favorite rapper, uh, a person that focuses on just being a lyricist. The reason why he wears a mask is because he doesn't want to focus on what his appearance is. He wants you to focus on what he's saying, which I really, really appreciate, especially as a creative. So if you are familiar with uh, the Fantastic Four, he pretty much has the mask like Dr. Doom. He portrays himself as a super villain. That's what he actually calls himself. And uh, his whole, uh, whenever he tells a story as a, whenever he puts his music together, he's telling it as a villain trying to take over the world. So it's very storyline heavy. He takes a lot of uh, content from the old school cartoons and puts it into his albums like he's actually taking you through the story, which is really, really cool. So unfortunately, he passed away um, back in October. We recently just found out at the end of December. And just to kind of pay homage to one of my favorite rappers and just, you know, just trying to um, carry on the legend of MF Doom, I thought that I would do his sneaker, which is right in front of you, the MF Doom Nike SB and turn it into, you know, a sticker or art print or is this something just to show on Instagram? That's awesome. I'm wondering if we have anyone else in the chat that's an MF Doom fan. If you are, give us a shout out. And I'm really excited to see how you use red in this because everything else is pretty dark. Yes. So I'm thinking red for the gem, red for the laces, um, some different cool blues as far as the mask. And uh, I'm gonna try to tie in some of the black but you know, I'll play around with it and see how we go, see how it goes. But what I'm thinking for the eyes is maybe, uh, you know, having like a glow in the dark feel. So maybe the background be black and the eyes glow. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Really give them that villain look. Yeah, it's very villainous. Love it. I really like how the mask kind of breaks the contour of the shoe shape. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Yeah, for this one, I thought I would try something uh, a little different. Um, sometimes I have it more of the sneaker or more of the character. So for this one, I feel like I found a, a really good balance. Yeah, I agree. And uh, like I was saying earlier, this is just another design that, you know, I did by hand. I probably drew it like four or five times to get it right. But as soon as I do it, I just bring it on to Illustrator and I just start bringing it to life. Awesome. So chat, if you weren't here yesterday, this is a good reminder of how Anderson works, starting with these large graphic shapes to build that nice outline. Paul says that he loves the idea of the glowing eyes and playing with the glow. Yes. Got one. Happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah. And also excited to see how you're going to tackle the metal, like the metallic kind of highlights and shadows. Mm -hmm. That's always fun. Yeah. The metals is, is always the, the tougher part, but mm -hmm. if you can nail it, it definitely helps to sell the design. Right. Thank you, Cody, for posting Anderson's Instagram link in the chat. If you want to see more work, obviously go follow him. Also on TikTok, TikTok apparently he's famous over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but I appreciate it. Please follow me on TikTok, yes. especially if you're a young creative, definitely uh, come and check it out. I'm doing more beginner stuff, more uh, fundamental stuff, trying to keep it simple and doing fan requests, you know, doing um, different things in my own style. 
Yeah, lots of good anime content over there. Some mm -hmm. My Hero Academia, some Naruto. Very cool. Yeah, just got into just got into My Hero, and I'm a fan. It's a good know, story, man. I don't know why I don't know why it took me so long, but I'm very very happy that I got into it. So, if you could have a superpower or a quirk, what would you want? <sighs> that is a tough one. I can't remember the character's name, but the one that has fire and ice has mm -hmm. my name written all over it, hands down. Ah, he's such an angry boy. Yeah, I get it. He definitely <laughs> is. It. That's why he's I just hot have to take... and cold. Exactly. That's why you just have to take the quirk. Yep, that's true. What about you? Oh, probably something telekinetic, like moving things with my mind. That would be pretty cool. Absolutely. But one thing I really love about that show and that story is there are people with superpowers that like seemingly would be useless but they have to find some really creative way to use their power and they end up becoming so powerful because they're so creative. That is true. That, um, with so many different superheroes or shows with powers, you would think it'd be hard to think of new things, but they've done such a good job at nailing new concepts that I just have not seen before, especially with so many characters. That's the crazy thing. Like everyone has a unique power and there's no shortage of characters in that mm -hmm. story. And my favorite part is the character design. I don't know how many people do it, who's in charge, but to have interesting character design for so many people. Yeah. They just do such a good job. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty it's sure tough. it's just one person who drew the original manga and mm -hmm. designed all the characters. It's definitely the hardest part is just being able to design something interesting. Right, that doesn't feel too overdone or like you've seen it a million times. Mm -hmm. Cody says that if she had a super power, she'd like to be able to talk to animals. That would be a pretty uh, cool power too. Mm -hmm. Dr. Doolittle in real life. Yep. Right, I just wonder if the animals, like, would they do your bidding or would you just like chat with them and that's it? Just be friends. Right, right. They'll still be the animals and just like not listen to you, but you can yeah. communicate to them. Right. <laughs> All right, Chad, it's time to tell us if you could have a superpower, what would you want? If you could be an X-Men, what kind of power, what kind of mutation Ooh, would you want? <laughs> One of my favorite X-Men is not like the most popular person, but Colossus. I was always oh. a fan of Colossus. I like being convenient where you could just kind of turn it on, you know? Right. Very tanky. Yeah. Paul says that he, if he could have a superpower, he would want to control time. That's a good one. Yeah. Lord knows I always wish for more time. Don't we all? One thing I would wonder, though, about, about that power, Paul, is like, could you have the time warp affect other people? Or would it just be you? Ooh, that's a good question. A lot of people are saying time or space travel. Yeah, teleportation would be pretty sweet. That would be. I'm not a fan of flying, so being able to teleport to where you got to go would be awesome. Yeah, and it just takes so much time. Back to the it time does. problem. Uh, I remember flying places. I know. <laughs> I know, right? Jason says that he would want a healing power. Hey, that's probably the power that's most important. Good call, Jason. Right. Or something like Wolverine would be nice, right? Oh, yeah. So little regeneration, little metal skeleton. Exactly. I don't know about the, the process to get the metal skeleton, but uh, yeah, being, no thanks. being able to heal would be, be grand. So you say you're not a huge fan of flying. Mm -hmm. um, if you could choose another type of transportation besides like just teleporting, what would it be? Like, would you rather take a ship? Would you rather take a train? Hmm. A horse? <laughs> I don't know about horses, but <laughs> trains are cool. I remember when I was in um, 
China and I was doing uh this one we could travel I, was, I did like an Anderson blue tour I did like 15 dates um from like April to December and uh, when I was in China I tried out their bullet trains and it was just like oh my god we need this in the U.S. like right? ASAP it was Gosh. incredible like we got I can't remember how far like we must have covered like 50 miles in like don't quote me, it's like five minutes. It was like crazy how fast it went. Man, I would love that. That'd be great for some cross-continental travel. Yeah. So I want to hear more about this tour. What, yeah. what was the goal? Do you want to do it again? Did you like it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the whole idea of the tour was just to get my name out as an artist. So there's like different events, there's like toy events for like designer toys, or there's like uh, the comic cons or sneaker events, convention shows. So um, there's one convention show I'm pretty cool with. They go to a lot of places. So I said, I'm going to go to as many places as I can just to try to spread the word that end up being 15 shows. I went to England, Australia, China, Japan. And the best thing about the show is I got to expose myself to different cultures and see how like people do things in other areas. Mm -hmm. And um, it, if you could travel, well, when we're able to travel again, I would say definitely, definitely do it. Definitely expose yourself to different things. And um, it really, really helped to get my name out for what I'm doing as far as um, artwork. And it also showed me that like the, not even the demographic, but the market in the US, you'll be shocked on how big other markets are. Like I had no idea how big the, the, the seller's market is in China. So uh, I actually met a professor when I was over there, a professor from the US and we were talking during lunch. He said, here's the thing that people don't know over in China, their middle class is literally the size of our entire class in the US. That's just their middle class. Wow. So it was then was just like, oh my God, that even if I don't focus on trying to get big in the US, but if I just spread the word of what I'm doing to all these other places, it could be just as good, you know? Yeah, so, if not um, better. Absolutely. And uh, I also learned how big basketball culture and sneaker cultures in other places, which is really, really nice. And uh, it was a great experience. Uh, if uh, you have YouTube, I mean, I'm sure some of you are watching on YouTube, <laughs> my YouTube channel, uh, I have literally the entire tour. I vlogged the entire thing, bringing you to all the places I went to, just showing you the food, showing you all this like uh, places to go shopping. Um, yeah, check it out. You know, it's definitely up there. So wow okay cool so i'm guessing some of the moderators can post your youtube channel in the chat i love watching vlogs so i'm definitely going to be watching that whole series <laughs> i decided to jump into the vlogging space while i was doing it and i'm happy i did yeah so I is that something that you're everything. yeah do you want to keep doing that or are you like i'm glad i did it but maybe not again um definitely want to continue doing that as soon as i'm able to get back on the road mm -hmm. um actually brought a film person with me so it was just a lot easier if i just had somebody handle it so it was his first time going to all these places so it was a great experience like we just went all over the place met people you know like funny story um certain places in china has never seen a black person before so man oh man were they surprised when i walked into their town they just couldn't believe it could not believe wow. it. Um, you know, I've never walked into a place and I saw like 50 cell phones go up in the air like, huh, I see a person of color today. Click. Oh my and gosh. It's not anything um, like malice. It's just, they just, they don't know what to do. Like they see it on TV, just can't believe like it's, it's happening in front of me, you know? Right. So um, yeah, it was, it was very, very, very interesting. So for those events, like the tour dates, was that you attending a convention that already existed or were you yes. kind of like, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much lined up to a uh, majority of the dates that existed. Mm -hmm. And do you have a favorite place that you visited on your tour? I have a few. Um, one of my favorite spots and I hate that it's so far is Australia. Australia yeah, good is- good coffee. It's, I can't even explain it. Just everything is really, really nice. The people are nice. 
I think it's easier to kind of get into it because they do speak English. So、mm-hmm. you almost feel like, you know, you're pretty close to home. But the culture over there is just so different and there's so much to learn. And I don't know, I had a good time. I definitely had a good time. And art is huge over there. I did not realize how big art is. Like they, they really appreciate art. They definitely bring people down to do murals and stuff like that. And they have their own shows.、Um, And、uh, I wouldn't have known that if I didn't go down. And、uh, I've actually been there two times.、Uh, the second time was definitely the time that I was able to like enjoy it because I knew where everything was.、Mm. And they're super healthy. If you're like, I try to eat healthy as best as I can. And、um, they have some of the best food. I didn't even realize that、um, they invented the avocado toast, like the smash avocado toast.、Wow. Started over there. Yeah, didn't know that. Didn't know that either. Okay, gotta get over to Australia. Yeah, so depending where you are, but、uh, I know for me, if you could stomach 22 hours, oof, it's definitely a good time. <laughs> Man, I'm guessing that wasn't、uh, a straight flight. Probably had to stop once or twice.、Um, yeah, so I actually had a show in Cali, did the、mm-hmm. show, and then I went straight to Australia right after. Wow. Man, do you think that's ever a place that you would want to live, or are you like New York for life? Uh, <laughs> if it was clo- if Australia was as close as like Canada, 100%, I would definitely、mm-hmm. be there more, but it's just too far,、yes. way too far. Literally the other side of the planet, literally, yeah. <laughs> And it takes like so many days to get used to like the time change. Definitely, we have some people who stream、uh, from the Adobe Australia offices, and they're always. Starting their stream in the morning when we're ending ours at night, and it、mm-hmm. kind of ends, it's perfect, but they're always like, Good morning. And I'm like, No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Time exactly. to go to bed. <laughs>、mm-hmm. Chad, I'm curious if you could go anywhere in the world, let us know where you'd want to go. If you could live anywhere, maybe a different country, let us know.、Um, I'm definitely hankering for some traveling after a year off, but stay impatient. What's your favorite place to go to? I love Japan. Really? Yes. What's your favorite part about Japan? um Honestly, I think the nature. the、uh, when we When we went there, we definitely enjoyed our time like in the countryside and in the mountains、mm-hmm. more than we did in the cities.、Mm-hmm. Um, it's just gorgeous. Love that they have a lot of seasons like we do in the Midwest. Yeah, can't wait to get back there. Absolutely. When I went, I was in、uh, Osaka.、Mm. And I was very, very pleasantly surprised when I heard that it's known to be like the kitchen because it has、yes. nothing but amazing food. Yeah. What's your favorite kind of food?、Uh, when I was there, just in general. In general. <sighs> Barbecue has definitely won me over. Like some good, like if you find a spot that has some like really, really good smoked barbecue, I'm all about it. Okay. Yeah. Because before I didn't realize that this is what barbecue is barbecue. And then I went to a spot in Dallas, and、uh, this spot is so good that it's only open two days a week. It's open on a Friday and Saturday, it's closed for the rest of the week. And then on that Friday or Saturday, the line starts at 9 a.m., and the place opens at 12.、Oh. Because once they sell out, that's it. You have to come back the next day. So. I went to check it out, got there early online.、Um, as soon as I ate the food, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is worth the hype. <laughs> That's、yeah. great to hear. I feel like so often those kind of things are disappointing.、Mm-hmm. And it was actually a spot that、uh, was a part of my vlog. Don't mean to keep plugging the vlog, but no, do it. I actually sat with the owner just to talk to him about, like, this food's amazing. Like, how'd you get into this? And he's retired.、Um, this is like his, you know, After, after working full time,、um, he's just like, I want to do something that I loved, something that wouldn't break me. So I just, two days, of, two days to sell the food. And after that, we just clean. And then that is it. That's all that I do. He said, Plenty of places come to try to franchise it. People want to buy in. He said, Absolutely not. He just loves what he does. Everything is made by him and his crew. And they really, really like treat it like a science. And I was all about it. Wow, they like have their system on lock.、Mm-hmm. 
That's great. That's inspiring for a designer too. Like know your process and keep at it, trust it. Absolutely. I, I almost believe that when you get to a certain point, like food is almost like art, you know, like when you have a, like a chef that really knows what he's doing and really perfects his crafts, there's like an art to it, you know? I agree. Are you much of a cook yourself or do you rather eat delicious food other people make? <laughs> I could cook, but um, I wouldn't call myself uh, a cook. I could, gotcha. uh, I get the job done. But I rather just uh, experience what other people do. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I like cooking, but I hate cleaning up afterwards. So yeah. if I could skip that part for the rest of my life, I would be like, okay, I can do this. It's for me, it's just getting the, all the ingredients. Like it's like you have to plan to get the ingredients and you got to prep the ingredients and mm -hmm. then it becomes a whole process. Yeah. That is one thing that has kind of saved me during this year to keep mm -hmm. me away from looking at a screen is like, all right, this is kind of an intense recipe, but I know I'm going to be busy with it for a couple hours. So I don't have to look at a light lighted screen in my eyes for that yes. amount of time. Absolutely. And a lot of these blue apron places is are also cool because it kind of, for me, it showed me new and different recipes I wouldn't have thought of. Yeah, it's a great way to learn how to cook. We got a lot of people in chat talking about where they would want to live, what their favorite recipes are. Mercurial says that they would want to live in the UK. That's awesome. Somebody said Mexico. Yeah, I've heard places in Mexico also have amazing art also. I haven't, mm -hmm. I haven't been, but I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah, I would love to go see some of that color, that, those colorful towns in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Fairy is wondering if we've ever tried a Gordon Ramsay recipe. I can't say I have. No, I didn't even know he had his recipes out, out on the yeah. internet like that. Right, he doesn't just keep them. <laughs> no, he kind of he kind of scares me, so I've shied away from his recipes. But maybe I should try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, as long as he doesn't know about, it, I'm sure he won't be too upset. Right, right, and I I feel like his uh, bluster is mostly for show. Right. You can't be that angry all the time, right? No, especially when you're <laughs> making food. That is true. Maybe he's just so passionate about the food. That's why. That's what ends up happening. That's true. That's a good point. Uh, chat, I want to remind you that in about 15 minutes, maybe closer to 20 minutes, we're going to be doing our artist spotlight. So we have a portfolio pulled up. We're gonna pop it open, check out some of the projects. It has to do with character design. So it's in um, Anderson's wheelhouse. We're gonna be celebrating some of the projects, just hyping it up. And if you would like to get your portfolio reviewed and checked out in a future stream, there's an artist spotlight tab above the chat pod. So you can click that, submit your portfolio or maybe someone else's. Like maybe you have an artist that you follow on Instagram or Behance that you love that you don't think gets enough attention pop it in there and we'd love to uh, check it out sometime. So you said we have about like 15 minutes? Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit so you can see some of the color. Ooh. See if I could. Super cool, that cream and that blue together is awesome. Yeah, I was worried about the blue, but it actually ended up playing together so nicely. So I'm actually really happy with it. So I'm actually gonna, do the stroke so we can kind of see what the color looks like popping off with black. Okay, cool. And then after the artist spotlight, we'll have some time to come back and, and keep working. So don't worry too much about time running out. Cool. Fairy says, what do you think about Indonesia? I'd love to visit. I don't know anything about Indonesia. So if the chat would like to tell me what's the you know why people would travel over there or what the things they're known for i would love to i love to learn a little bit about the culture definitely i think fairy might be from indonesia maybe i'm wrong or maybe the philippines so fairy give us give us your pitch why should we come visit is it the weather the food all of the above the shopping yeah right <laughs> the love for k-pop could be that
Christine says that New Zealand is on her travel bucket list. That would be awesome. Definitely. So we're doing that kind of classic Anderson thick black outline to make that Absolutely. design pop. Round out the corners a little bit. And not sticking too closely to the, to the sneakers on this one, but trying to make sure I do something that the fans would enjoy as far as like the MF Doom fans. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you talked a little yesterday about how you find that nice medium between it looking like a sneaker and looking like the actual thing. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you're kind of leaning more into the the doom mm -hmm. on this one. But the top is very sneaker-like. So like I was saying earlier, it's definitely hard to find a balance, but you know, that's why good old exper experimenting definitely helps you do the job. Yeah, I gotta always take that time to try something new. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you kind of talked about how you landed on the pencil tool versus the pen tool and some of mm -hmm. that experimentation. But for those who missed it yesterday, I think Omar was asking about it. Um, why are you using the pencil tool instead of the pen tool? So, so with the pen tool, like I'm using right now, it's almost impossible to use with the, um, the Cintiq. It just doesn't work well together. Like mm -hmm. the pen tool really works the best when you're um, using your mouse. And, um, you know, the pencil tool is just a more free version of the pen tool uh, for the, when you're using a tablet or anything like that. And like you were saying before, it's pretty close to actually drawing on the screen. Mm -hmm. And then you still, the good thing is you still have those points where if you want to correct something, you could definitely do that. Yeah, I think if you want to literally draw, the pencil tool is great if you're using mm -hmm. Illustrator. If you're more about building your graphic using uh, points and handles and curves, then you might like the, the pen tool more. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna do this eye first. Nice, using that ellipse tool. And then, so how should I do this? Got it. So I'm gonna copy this and then I'll put that in front. And then I'm just gonna pretty much divide it so I can get rid of the shape, the top half. And now that I think about it, so there's a few ways you could do this. I could do this the hard way, which I just did for no reason. And then it will match perfectly. <laughs> yes. But then I just realized that this is gonna be flat and let me just uh, go back here so I could always just put this right behind, but in front of the yellow, of course. So what needs to happen is, I just gotta change my order of layers. So put this right behind that, and then this right on top of this. And then when I switch it to black, nobody will know the difference. Perfect. So that, that's some of the things you could do, like I said, when you are doing a flat design. Yeah, so as long as it looks right, it mm -hmm. works. So now I'm just going to make a copy of this, make it a little smaller, drag this in for the eye. Whoops. Should work. And then just change that to white. This time around, I'm actually going to divide to make sure it's correct. Do not want the white to show that. Cool. Okay. 
Great. And now I can just take a copy of this. One less thing I have to worry about. In fact, I cannot take a copy of that because <laughs> it's a clipping mask. And right there. And now change this to blue. Oh, nice. So then it has like that glowy eye to it. So cool. And then now it's going to keep continuing doing what I'm doing, adding the shadowing, the highlights. I like the yellow, just uh, I want to use some different colors in this one. Try yeah. to keep it to my style, make sure that it pops. Right. That's one cool thing about metal is there's all kinds of different colors in there that you would mm. not expect there to be. It doesn't always have to be gray. Absolutely. And for this one, this line I made, I definitely want it to be thicker in the end. So it's just not one regular shape. Gotcha. So, so right there, I add some style to it. And then rather than use the pencil tool, because I use a pencil tool, I'll literally be here all day <laughs> doing that. So I'm gonna hope I have a brush handy. And if I don't, I will create one. I see that kind of um, dashed pattern going up the side and I feel like it'd be the perfect opportunity to use the blend tool. Have you ever tried that? Uh, refresh my memory. So it's basically you have two shapes mm -hmm. and when you use the blend tool, it will basically blend the two shapes uh, in steps between it. So if you put one line at one side, one line at the very other side, blend mm -hmm. them, it would make all of those lines in between automatically. So you don't have to play with it right now on stream. But so it would actually <laughs> like follow all the way up. Mm hmm. Hmm. That's good to know. Yeah, maybe with an exploration in the future. Definitely. Because I also know you could also copy and then I think it's like control D or something like mm -hmm. that. If you have it go in the same direction, they'll follow all the way up. Yeah, that's always so satisfying. See, that's the one I don't know about everybody else, but the one difficult thing about learning Illustrator and Photoshop is there's just so many ways to do things mm -hmm. and everybody will tell you their own way. So it's not about knowing how to do it. It's just trying to pick which one works for you. Yeah, like some workflows just don't make sense for your style and that's mm -hmm. okay. And it doesn't help that new tools are being released every year, every couple months. And you're like, wait, when did that happen? Yep. And then there's that. <laughs> Even working at Adobe, I'm like, what? I've never heard of that tool before. Please, please teach me. Mm -hmm. And I've been using the Adobe products for a minute. Like, like <laughs> it was the first program that I learned to do graphic design. So especially since the cloud came out, they were just making so many updates. Yes. So hmm, what color am I going to go with? Try this. I want to be black, but not too. So Ferry was trying to convince us to come to Indonesia, and his pitch was that uh, the food is delicious and it's very cheap, so you can buy a lot of it. Oh, that's a good pitch. You got yeah, my works attention. for me. <laughs> yeah. Change that to black. So in fact, I'm gonna work on laces. Nice, let's get that red, that pink in there. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I like to figure out is like how I want to do the shadowing and then I like to follow right after. So I'm probably going to start all the way on the edge and try to give some different variation to it. And let's cut it right there. Oh, nice line. <laughs> Got to celebrate the little things. Definitely. 
now. My colors I have up top. Let's see how it looks. Looks pretty good, I think. That pops. Now what I'll do is add some highlights to the top. So, got it. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Do I have a brush? I do. Cool. So, for this one, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we will see. Fingers crossed. Hmm. Try it on the side. Okay, cool. I really like this nice pink kind of salmon color. You use that in the um, raging bowl as well. Mm hmm. I thought we'd uh, keep it the same for this one. Since especially since it's red laces. Try this again. How are we doing on time? Good. We got about five minutes, so we're gonna do our portfolio reveal. Cool. I'm excited to check out some different art, get some inspiration, and then jump back into this. Absolutely. And that's actually a good reminder for everybody. We do have more streams finish or coming right after Anderson finishes up at uh 11.30 Pacific time, I think. <laughs> it's 2.30 Eastern time is when we're going to be jumping <laughs> off of here. Um, so if you want to keep learning, please stick around. We've got the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. I believe it's day one with um, Andrew Hawkrattle. He'll be here. He's awesome. It's a replay, so you can always just learn and the chat will be open. So you can hang out and just chat and learn at the same time. We've got the XD Daily Creative Challenge happening. I think it's a replay as well. So you can chat and learn at the same time. And then I think we have something else sprinkled in there. So there's always replays to be watched. If you can't get enough of Adobe Live, if you scroll down below this video, there's other live streams happening as well as all of the live streams that we have ever streamed are saved there too. Pretty impressive. I'm definitely a on-demand kind of person. Yeah? Oh yeah, definitely be able to do things on my own time, all about mm -hmm. it. So what I like to do is like do one very detailed one so I can kind of just like follow along for the rest of the laces. That's smart, so you're not trying to kind of Re reinvent the wheel each time you're using one as reference because mm -hmm. for some reason i just feel like it takes longer if you're trying to do everything once you know mm -hmm. so if you focus on one kind of use that as like your your road map i think somebody asked earlier and i forgot to ask you do you know how many uh pairs of sneakers that you own <laughs> i'm actually a lot better yeah. The highest I used to have is about like 60 to 70 pairs. Of just but, sneakers? Yeah, it was bad. But I've slowed down a lot. I probably have like 20 pairs now. Oh boy. And yeah, what makes it hard is luckily companies send me pairs of sneakers. So I'm definitely not going to say no to that. Right. So unfortunately, the count just, just bills because of that. Man. You're like one of those beauty influencers who just gets a ton of products, endless products, but it's sneakers. Yes. And then, I mean, the good news is because I'm, I'm not a common size, I don't get a lot of it. So okay. that helps to keep the, the number low. Man, I thought I was bad with the amount of shoes I own, but I don't feel so bad anymore. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but I know people that have like almost a warehouse full of sneakers like oh it's bad gosh. yeah so what does your collection look like is it like uh displayed is it stacked in their boxes um not displayed pretty much in the boxes so i have mm -hmm. like the sneakers that i've designed so i have like a few pairs i'm just not gonna wear i just hold 
and then I have like the stuff that I like, like the Jordans, the LeBrons, you know, um, different different miscellaneous pairs. I've just kind of got into comes kind of to fan on the design. But I also pick up sneakers because um, I like to see the materials people use. So I kind of use it as, um, you know, inspiration for when I'm ready to design my own stuff. So when I go to the factory, I kind of have an idea what I want to do and how I want to approach it. So just being able to see how they designed, you know, the boxes and how they did the paper and how they uh, picked the fabrics for the sneakers and stuff like that. It's, it's just a lot better to see it in person. Mm, it's all research. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. All right. Let's keep these highlights going. Yeah, and it's about time for us to do the uh, portfolio review. So I'm going to give production like 30 seconds to kind of figure out uh, the screen sharing. But we're going to pop over and check out a portfolio very, very soon. Ooh. And this is a good time chat. If you have any questions during this little interim, please send them over. We're checking out the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, come on over to Behance because we're looking at the Behance chat. Uh, and we can't see your questions if you're on YouTube. All right, I'm gonna try and share my screen real quick. Mm -hmm. Here we go. <laughs> and we're good to go on my end. Stuff looks, stuff looks awesome. Nice. I'm just going to double check that we can see it on the live stream. But I'll just. OK, cool. We are good. So the artist that we're going to be uh, highlighting, her name is Natasha Del Rio from Santa Cruz, California on the West Coast. Very nice. So Natasha is an illustrator. If you want to check out Natasha's work, you can check out this a link right over here. Someone might be able to post it in the chat as well. We have a little bit of a bio over here. Uh, Natasha works on illustrations, digital paintings, graphic design, and motion graphics, which is very cool. We talked about how important it is to be a motion, uh, have some motion skills to make yourself valuable. Uh, so Anderson, I'm wondering, is there any project that jumps out to you that you want to check out first? Oof, the one that catches me definitely is the Sailor Moon one. Um, yes. Takes you back to my childhood. Did you see this meme when it was going around that everyone I was, was like redrawing this? <laughs> going to say that. Yeah, yes. I definitely, definitely did. But yes, yeah, this I, is. But this is awesome. Nice. I love it. I think that Natasha's work has a very specific style with the way mm -hmm. that she does the eyes and even the mm -hmm. shading. That kind of like mm -hmm. very soft shading. That this is definitely Natasha's style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the most important thing that we were saying before is to definitely keep building on that style because that's what people are going to know you for. So I love to, that we're seeing it in all different, all her different designs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we haven't really talked about showing process as mm -hmm. a valuable thing. I think people love to see time lapses and like how you do things. So having this as part of your portfolio is really nice, Natasha. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, anytime I work with a brand, they've always contacted me because they've seen how I did things. So it, um, it's really, really good that you're doing this. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I think people really like to know how you think and seeing you work is like the greatest way to figure out how somebody thinks and how they problem solve. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I do this all the time because I do it so often. I think it's boring when I'm going through like the, you know, the small design stuff. But for the people that don't do design like we do, to them, it's just like seeing how people like create, you know, create food or anything like that. They like to see what happens behind the scenes. So, yeah, and there's also back your head. right. There's some value here as well, like being able to show that something is not easy to do. Like we're seeing all of the blending Natasha's doing, all of the line mm -hmm. work. So you see her effort. Yeah. Nicely done. Let's see. I was really interested in this because I think this is such a smart way to make like a separate income stream is mm -hmm. to make these assets or make sticker packs that people can download for just a couple dollars. Like that's great. 
So Natasha has this custom cat iOS kind of icon set where you can, with the new iOS 14, you can customize all of your icons. Rich, hand- I didn't even know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, all hand drawn in Adobe Fresco. So we love to see that. That's awesome. This little TikTok is so cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love how consistent it is. Mm-hmm. The little watercolor Instagram. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if Natasha used the actual watercolor brushes in Adobe Fresco because this looks very hand drawn, really mm-hmm. nice. And then she has the link down here. So if you want to go buy it or give a donation, you can do that. Yeah, really no, this smart. Is awesome. mm-hmm. I'm inspired. Okay, let's look at two more. What else strikes your fancy? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. What about that blue one? It's more of like a portrait with. Yep, that one. Chris Cornell tributes. I like the colors on this one. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a really good um, challenge to give yourself as an Mm -hmm. artist, that limited palette. And then Mm -hmm. she, you see in her other work that she uses a really like blended texturing style, but here Mm -hmm. it's very contoured, almost like a a map, like a Mm -hmm. topographical map. really nice yeah yeah it's just something about the colors just draws your eyes to it you know mm-hmm. yeah i think this is worthy of a series if yeah. Natasha made like a whole set of portraits that would be amazing mm-hmm. all right let's look at uno mas anything else striking your fancy hmm so many to choose from i do like the character designs the like the black and white sketches because mm-hmm. you know I love to see when people develop their stuff and I'm happy you clicked into it because now she's kind of showing you behind the scenes. So right. it's, it's always good to see how people get to, you know, the final product. So it's really, really good to see how she was able to do that. Right. Kind of goes back to the idea of people want to see how you think and mm-hmm. showing your process is mm-hmm. a great way to do that. Um, especially for like character design and video game design, you need mm-hmm. to have the process because we need to understand that the story is well mm-hmm. thought out. Yeah, and she has the turnarounds too, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so apparently this is for a 2D isometric game. So we have that kind of like almost top down, straight Mm -hmm. straight up and down style. Mm -hmm. Love the costume design here and this angular Mm -hmm. kind of fashion. Yeah, no, I like the style of it. Oh, we got some animations. Cool. Some sprites. Reminds me of Zelda, the way it's moving. Yeah, Mm mm-hmm. Cool. We have some kind of fully fledged out character portraits mm-hmm. and some different costume choices, which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> floofy sleeves. <laughs> I'm always down for a floofy sleeve. Definitely. Wow. This is awesome. Natasha, I wonder if uh, she's going into like visual development for video mm-hmm. games or for animation. That would be mm-hmm. sweet. Yeah. Great job, chat. If you're interested again in following Natasha, you can do so with the link up at the top or just searching Natasha Del Rio on Behance. And then we've got about 20-ish minutes until we're gonna be saying goodbye. So if we want to maybe spend the next like 10 minutes continuing work and then we can do kind of a full wrap up. Yeah, cool, let's do it. Awesome, I'm gonna wait for the go ahead to stop sharing my screen and we'll pop back over to you. Awesome. So we're switching back to Anderson very Got soon. It. Nice. Cool. Yeah, everyone in the chat is so excited about Natasha's work. That's awesome. They're loving the sticker, the sticker set with the cats. Yeah, I did not know that. I had no idea that you could customize your own stuff. There we go. Maybe we'll see some Anderson Blue custom sticker sets coming up here soon. Yep. For the sneaker heads. Have a whole bunch of <laughs> sneaker mean, calendars and whatnot. Yeah, you know they have money to spare, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> it definitely feels that way. Yeah, cool. So we're still working on these laces, getting those shadows and highlights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People love the sketches. I love them too. Natasha's work was awesome. Yeah.
So for this MF Doom work, you're thinking final product would be a print? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So I have to figure out the background, but um, I think this would make a really, really cool print. I think especially for um, people who are like are a fan mm -hmm. of his work, having something that's not just a picture of him, yep. like a photograph, is really special. There's a lot of value there. Mm -hmm. And then to the people that collect my stuff, um, what they do that's really, really cool is if they have the sneaker or the toy or anything like that, they'll like hang up the sneaker and the artwork together. So that's a new thing that's been happening. And I don't have one of these, but some people do. They have like a dedicated sneaker room. So like they'll decorate their sneaker room with the artwork. So I do have people that have around like 20 of my pieces. That looks like an art gallery in their room. And it looks really, really awesome. Wow. That's so cool that you have people collecting your work. Mm -hmm. um, didn't know that'd be a thing when I first started, but I'm all about it. So shout out to all the people or anybody that's uh, picked anything up. One of the cool things that I did was for during the Christmas holiday was um, on TikTok, um, usually doing requests for different designs in my own style. So what I did was to the people that have been with me for the last, you know, three or four years, I've sent them like uh, one of one hand drawings that I've done. And wow. that's like a surprise for Christmas. Yeah. Did they love that? I'm sure they did. They were shocked. Yeah. So I always send personal messages with my artwork saying thank you or, you know, I'll throw in stickers and stuff like that. But I always like to throw in little surprises and stuff like that for people. Yeah, a little bit of value. Mm -hmm. Love that. Someone is wondering if we can zoom out and see everything. Just sure. real quick, get a, a bird's eye view and how things are looking. Nice. Oh, I forgot about the blue. To go back and do the blue so mm -hmm. this is what it looks like so far some of it is in fact what i could do for right now just to everybody could see i'll just change it all blue for the moment So this is what it looks like so far. I just have to just switch the colors, um, you know, add the shadows, add the highlights, and yeah, slowly, slowly come into life. Wow. I love that last little step you take when you add the outline and all of the like thicker black lines. It just, it really shows that your process is paying off. <laughs> I, I like to think of it like a, a fun little surprise. Uh-huh. So, Antonio says, this is looking great. Thank you. And I can actually go back and start playing. Nice. This is where you really get to play and experiment about how those highlights and shadows are going to be contoured. Yep. And right now, not really sure how it's going to work out, but the diamond, once I get the diamond together, it will definitely help to give it that little bit of pop. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned yesterday, usually when on your sketch, you like to have like every shadow, every highlight already mapped out. So you don't even have to think about it when you're at mm -hmm. this step. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have it so much with this one, but I kind of have an idea where everything should go, so. Nice. And that also allows you to experiment a little bit more than you might have otherwise. It's true. So you said that in 2021, you're hoping to do some more educational content. Uh, what do you think that looks like for you? 
Um, I think it would be more about how to work in Illustrator, mm -hmm. some of the tricks I've learned along the way, and also mixing it with some business stuff for the people that are trying to do freelance and trying to, you know, attack the art world from a business standpoint. Um, one of the things I feel like we don't hear a lot of, it's a lot of tips on how to do things as an artist, but when it comes to business, um, you know, there's not so much information, you know? So just trying to create some content to kind of, to help people out, I think will go a long way. Yeah, I think I had one quote unquote business class in art <laughs> school and it was basically like, you have to pay quarterly taxes. And I was like, okay, what else though? <laughs> exactly, you know, like how much tax am I gonna owe? What kind of business should I start? You know, is, it, is, is now the right time to have a LLC or should I have mm -hmm. an S Corp, you know? Like all those things are very, very important. Yeah, and also like any information about how the business world works. What mm -hmm. language do they speak? Like what kind of things are they looking for in a designer? How can I offer my skills in a way that they're gonna understand? Mm -hmm. Or try to navigate the contracts, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, anything that I think is super important is definitely just owning as much as your work as possible. Mm. I think that definitely goes a long way. Yeah, that's interesting in, in this digital day and age, like when you might license work versus sell it completely versus not give any rights away at all. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, you know, difficult to navigate that stuff if you don't know. Yeah, so everybody keep an eye out. Follow Anderson on TikTok and Instagram <laughs> and YouTube and keep an eye out for that good business content. Absolutely. Pablo says, hey guys, what's up, Pablo? Good to see ya. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for joining. We've got about 15 minutes left here with Anderson. Then we're gonna unfortunately have to say goodbye, but like I said, you gotta follow him on social to keep up with them. And then we're gonna have more uh, Adobe Live right after this. So we have some replays planned for some daily creative challenges, but you can still hang out in the chat um, and learn that way. And we've got a full week of streams coming up too. So if you scroll beneath this video, you can see the future schedule for Adobe Live. I think it goes until the end of the week. I like this repetition of this line that you have under his eye. It kind of repeats the same texture you have over in the sole of the shoe as well. Mm -hmm. That is true. I, did, I didn't even see that. See, I tricked myself. <laughs> And since we only have a little bit of time left, chat if you have any last minute questions, even about that business side of the world or about Anderson's story, process, anything like that, feel free to uh, pop it in the chat and we will get that answered before we have to say goodbye. Absolutely. Oops. I'm curious about your experience working with clients, especially mm -hmm. back when you were first doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that you would recommend to a beginner, like something you wish you would have known back then? Uh, um, so many for me to choose from. <laughs> you um, learn a lot, yeah. Oh yeah, you definitely do. Uh, I think it all depends on the situation and you know what you're trying to do. I think, uh, you know, every business you work with is different and yeah. every project you work with is different. I, I think it's more about treating the client that you're working with, like just keeping that in mind. And when I say that, like, um, you know, if you're working with McDonald's, you know, this is a big franchise, there's going to be a lot of moving pieces. So you really want to establish who's going to be your main point of contact, you know? Yes. Um, you want to figure out who has creative control. Are you doing everything? Or are you going to have people kind of stepping on your toes? Um, 
I feel like just knowing those things in the very, very beginning definitely go a long way. Um, and just just getting everything out in the beginning as far as like how things how everything's gonna work, um, you know, who's gonna do what, what do they expect from you. Um, and uh, I feel like one of the biggest things that I've seen that really makes a difference as far as keep getting rehired or getting reached out to different people is just being able to uh, stay on the schedule getting things done in time. Um, a lot of projects, I can't name a project where it hasn't been a quick turnaround. And <laughs> I thought it was only me. And I've heard stories from other people and it's just the same thing. It's just the nature of the game. So if that's something that you're not into, which is totally fine, you know, um, definitely doing your own thing is probably, probably be better. But just keep in mind, we work with these bigger brands that um, they might want things faster than you anticipate. But uh, one of the things I would say for somebody new that just hit me was I would definitely create your own content, like your own properties. I wouldn't rely just on the businesses because God forbid something happens again, like what we're dealing with now and certain businesses are shutting down and um, you know other businesses are not willing to spend any money. If you spent mm -hmm. time to really develop your own content and your own artwork, you sell on stickers and pins and stuff like that, it's just a good way to keep income coming in. We don't have to kind of rely on businesses to get work. So yeah, that's a really definitely, definitely that. great point. We talked yesterday even about like having your own website versus relying mm -hmm. on social media a hundred percent because we know social media can just disappear. Mm -hmm. And and think of it this way. If you work with a big company and you just do a project for them after the project, it's like marketing for you. So if you have your own pins mm -hmm. and hats and stuff like that, now all those people that saw your product can now go to your website and they can go and get your stuff, you know? So it's just, as far as I'm concerned, it's definitely, it's a, it's a win-win when you do stuff like that. Definitely. I think that's a great note to kind of end on. We've got about three minutes left. So I'm hoping that maybe we can um, go back to the beginning of this process and see everything you've done so far. And then Absolutely. we'll say adios to everybody. Yeah. So. For this, like I was saying before, right now I'm doing design for this hip hop artist right here, MF Doom. Um, on top is a sneaker that he did uh, a few years ago. So I decided to go back and do my own spin on it, mixing his face and the sneaker into one. Um, when we started, give me one second as I find the original sketch. Sure. As we started right here is a sketch that I did. This was done by hand. Um, and then what all I did was I scanned it in, brought it into Illustrator, and I just pretty much traced over my work. Um, everybody does that, but that's just how I like to do things. And this is how far that I got. And then this is the other design that I did finish a little earlier, this Raging Bull, that will probably be another design that I'll drop, hopefully either the end of this month or next month, who knows. But this is something that I worked on earlier, and I've just shown how I brought this one to life from just like before, from the this, this sketch to the finished design. Wow, so we're seeing a design that's not gonna drop for another month or two. We got like a little preview. Absolutely. Yay, that's why you gotta tune into Adobe Live. We get all the premium content. <laughs> uh, Anderson, it's been super nice to see your process and I know the chat has really enjoyed the last two days. So again, I know we have some links in the chat to Anderson's social. If you wanna go follow him and check out these drops when they happen and also whatever content mm -hmm. you make in the future, please do so. Um, Anderson, where would you want people to find you most yeah, um, importantly? Definitely. Definitely on Instagram. I'm all over Instagram. So definitely shoot me a follow, shoot me a DM. Um, I love talking to everybody. And also a new platform that I'm on is TikTok. If you decide to jump on a TikTok wave, definitely shoot me a DM. I'm trying to put up as many different videos as trying to educate people on how to do art and how to draw different things and just try to get better as, a, as an artist. That's awesome. We can all learn together. And I'm going <laughs> to let Anderson go for now. Make sure you stick around for the rest of Adobe Live coming up right after us. We've got a whole day, a whole slate of other streams. So come back in about five minutes, go get some water, and we will see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Peace out, guys. <laughs>